Okay, so with no further ado, let's get into this. First, today's session will be about breaking down um, many different techniques. We won't get into all of them, but I wrote a little list of some of the techniques that one can uh, use on the bass drum. So you can see it here. We've got heel up, flat foot, heel down, heel toe, slide, and swivel. That's just there's more hybrids i guess but these are pretty much the fundamentals of technique if you know all of these uh, trust me your bass drum technique will be just fine and you're going to struggle to find an exercise that that's going to cause you trouble from a technical standpoint anyway so let's break it down heel up and flat foot are often confused by the way so we got to get into these ones i'm going to change my camera here so you guys can see my foot bear with me one second back on time I don't know what's happened here, but I can't access it. Okay, there we go. Okay. So, heel up and flat foot. There's a, a couple of differences there that are important to understand. The first one is that when uh, both of them, actually, the heel is off the pedal, obviously. Heel up, that's quite self-explanatory, and flat foot, that's also the case. The difference is the wind-up. So the heel up technique, it, there's going to be a bit of a whipping effect, much like a molar motion, where the heel basically drops after each, each stroke. And then resets again. Flat foot, there's more of a, just of a point of impact being the ball of the foot. So there's no whipping. It's mainly a hip motion. The ankle doesn't really move much. So the, as opposed to this, right? In slow motion, you can really see the difference. That's heel up. This is flat foot, right? The heel never really fully drops. This is heavier on the hip. A bit more work there for the hip, but that's flat foot. It's going to be necessary for some exercise. It's not really something that I would use a lot. I like the, the whipping effect of the molar applied to the heel up. But the flat foot technique does allow for some uh, engagement with the hip that sometimes gets a bit ignored when we play too much, uh, you know, um, well, <laughs> this is not a real technique, by the way. This is what I call bad technique when doing heel up, is, is poking technique. We start just poking at, at, the, at the pedal with the toes, like that. And then we start to disengage from the hip. The hip is necessary for all these setups, right? Like you want a full, uh, fully relaxed leg, you're gonna have to engage with more than just one joint. So all of this, Includes the, the hip flexors, includes includes the knee, includes the, an the ankle. So all of that is at work, okay? Then, going back to the thingy. Then we've got heel down. That one is also self-explanatory. We all know about this one. Heel stays on the heel plate, and we just tap the foot. Now, a couple of things that I want to talk about uh, when it comes to heel down. One thing that we have to be very careful about, uh, and Derek, you might want to switch your camera now to your foot. One thing that we need to be careful about here is okay. to not let go of the pedal at the front when we set it up. As we go up, we don't want to do this. This is going to cause two problems. Problem number, problem number one is that now the beater starts, you know, bouncing back and forth because of the spring. 
Uh, and then as you're coming down, you might be catching the, the beater as it's traveling towards the skin, meaning that that momentum is going to work against you, right? Because as you land, the beater is going to be close to the skin and you're going to get a, a very quiet note. So we have to find that sweet spot where the foot moves up, foot moves down, up, but never exceeding the range of motion of the pedal board. You see that? We never want to disconnect that. So we need to find that sweet spot there where the pedal and uh, so the pedal board and the foot always match. Okay. Let me just take a look here. Okay, so heel down, heel up, flat foot. So three techniques. Let's keep going. We're going to practice all of them today. Then we've got heel toe, where of course we start to have combinations of heel strokes and uh, toe strokes. So in other words, heel up strokes with that molar wind up and then tap strokes in heel down fashion. Okay, so now here we, we, we can set it up even with the uh, the heel low, you're going to set it up with a molar motion, release the beater from the skin, so we got to be careful so we don't do this, right, where the beater stays on the skin, then you're not going to be able to catch the second stroke for the heel toe, so drop, tap, now that tap is also going to be a lift, so this is what we call an upstroke, that's going to be next week's material, so I'm not going to get too deep into that, but Okay, again, that's heel, toe. Now, notice once again, as I drop the heel, know this, no wobbly beaters. Always look for that little red flag. If you see a wobbly beater, you're losing control over the pedal board. All right, so drop. I right, see my the ball of my foot is still touching the pedal board. Up. Okay, and eventually you're going to get a nice little flow out of that, right? Cool. Next technique is the slide technique. This is when you're going to bring your foot down the pedal board a little bit. Right, you're going to keep your heel up. Everyone can try that. Bring your, your feet down the, the pedal boards, right? You're going to strike there. Allow the foot to slide up as you catch the next one. So, of course, this is a motion that requires some momentum, right? Of course, it doesn't really work in slow motion. But I'll fake it first so you guys can see exactly the, the, where the, the foot is placed. Hit, slide, and hit. Hit, slide. Hit, slide. And the slide in itself creates enough momentum that you catch the second stroke. Okay, you can see there on the left side much more easily. You can see my, my foot. Traveling up and down. Ready. The last one. The last technique, and then we're going to go back and practice all of them. i got a, a couple of exercises for all of you. Is the swivel. The swivel is an interesting one. Again, full disclosure, much like the flat foot technique, I don't use swivel a lot. Um, what I do do, though, is when I'm playing doubles using a bit of a slide technique, I do bring my ankle over to the left a bit. So that one you could be, you probably you can see better if you look at the right side of my screen.
So there's a bit of a flick of the ankle there. So that's not a problem. That's perfectly okay. Uh, I would suggest, uh, looking at your foot bend, that you raise your heel a little more. Yeah, yeah. it's going to uh, give you more access to the hip. Okay, so the, the swivel technique, the ball of your foot is going to be a pivot point. Okay, so you're going to drop the heel over to the left and create a stroke with it. So see if I can, let me just try to move my other camera a bit more. And if I have enough cable time, I can just try to move it. Okay. So over to the left, over to the right. So right off the pedal, right? So it's always off the, the heel plate there, see? But the ball of the foot never leaves the pedal board. Eventually, as you start to generate some momentum, as it goes to, with all these techniques, it starts to gain its own flow. Right, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It starts to, to really acquire its own flow of motion. Okay, it's a, but do practice them very slowly. It's important that the muscles get used to it first. Momentum will come with muscle memory. You don't need to worry about that. One thing that I also want to say that you don't need to worry about is creating lots of volume. Right? We don't need to worry about that when we're trying to learn things slow. Volume will come from momentum as well. So without that, that energy behind the, the free floating motion when we're playing in slow motion, yeah, you're bound to not get a lot of volume. It's just perfectly fine, and I wouldn't worry too much about that. Okay, so let's recap. We've got heel up, flat foot, heel down, heel toe, slide, and swivel. Let's practice some heel up uh, motions. Now, like I said, we're going to focus on that wind up, that molar wind up. So we're going to start with the heel low. Now, it's not dropped. I'm not relaxed, right? The heel is low, but still off the pedal there. You can see on the left side there. And the right side as well, I guess. And then you're going to wind up and strike. Now you're going to stop that heel so it's not um, again, all the way dropped. It's not a, a, a letting go of tension. It's management of tension. All right, so here we go. Wind up. Wind up. And then you can start to time those, those moments when, when you wi wind up. So you can go, if you, if you count a in eighth notes, let's call it. One and two. The ands will be the wind ups. Okay, one and two and three and four, and one, and two, and three. All right, let's give that a good track. I'm going to mute everyone. Two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Up, 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 down, up, down, up. Nice and relaxed. Allow that the foot to give to, you know, create its own motion. Let the ankle work for you, and then allow the rebound of the pedal board. The spring tension is going to give you that extra support there, because as you wind up and release tension from the pedal board, naturally because of the spring the beat is going to start to move away from the skin. So you don't need to worry about that. You just release and drop. Release, release. OK, awesome. Let me give you guys a little exercise, a little troubleshooting exercise. If you start to feel as if your ankle is too tight, right? doesn't give you enough flex, enough um, 
elasticity there for the whip to feel comfortable. Here's a little exercise that you guys can do. And let's all do this together. Beater against the skin, pressing with the ball of your feet, of your foot, um, not the toes. Allow the toes to stay nice and relaxed. If you start to feel your, your toes curl in, by the way, just make a, con a conscious effort to really spread them open as you play. Really flatten the toes as much as you can inside your shoes. So the ball of your foot, you know, like that, that ball behind your big toe, that's where you should try to use as a reference point for where you're putting the most pressure. Try not to lean towards your, your um, small toes. Okay, bring the pressure over to the big toe because that's going to level the foot a little more. Some people start to do things like these. You see that I'm tilting over to the left. And then, of course, the ankle just uh, uh, tightens up. Okay, so on the ball of your feet. Now, all you're going to do is tap with your heel. But here's the thing. We're not actually playing any, any notes. I'm going to keep the beater on the skin the whole time. I'm just going to tap with the heel and see if we can manage to keep that pivot, the ball of your foot, that's the pivot, on the pedal board. Nice and slow. Don't worry about, uh, Derek, don't worry about resetting the heel back up too quickly. Drop, up, drop, up, drop up drop we can even think of the setups that's all that again setups are key right we always need to be thinking about the setups when do they happen let's think about 16th notes okay everyone thinking in 16th notes one e and a uh. the up will be on the uh so there's no rush we're going to leave it for the last 16th note before the drop like this one e and a uh, two e and a uh, three e and up, four, E and up, one, E and up, down, E and up, down, E and up, down, E and up, down, up, down, E and up, down. Okay, let's do this one here with a click. So remember this, right? You always want E and up to always need to be focused on the setups. 99% of the issues that people have with timing their strokes has more to do with the fact that they are not timing when to go up, when to set up the actual stroke, right? What comes down must first go up, so we need to think about when that happens, otherwise everything starts to go a bit wonky. Three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and up, down E and up, two E and up, four E and up, one E and up, two E and up, three E and up, two E and up, one E and up, two E and up, three E and up, four E and up, one E and up, two E and up, three E and up, four E and up, one E and up, two and up, three E and up, four E and up, one E and up, two E and E and up four E and up E and up two and up three E and up. Make sure your body, your torso is leaning forwards. Don't lean back. That's gonna put a lot of strain on your hips. If you need extra support for your torso to stay nice and tall, put your hands on in front of you on a snare drum. Don't grab the chair, which is what some people do to find balance. Up, up, one, e and up, two, e and up, three, e and up, four, e and up, one, e and up, two, e and up, three, and up, four, e and up, one, up, two, and up, three, e and up, four, e and up, one, and up, two, e and up, three, e and up, four, e and up, and up, two, e and up, three, e and up, four, e and up, one, up, two, up, three, e and up, four, e and up, one, e and up, two, and up, three, e and up, four, and up, one, up, two, up, three, up, four, up, one, up, two, up, three, up, 
four. Up one. Nice. The next exercise would be to do the exact same thing, but we will now allow the pedal board to be released. Right, and the beater will come back, and we're gonna actually strike the skin. One E and up, two E and up, three E and up, four E and up. The only difference is that I'm allowing that spring to now do some work. I'm gonna release at the front and then hit. Now also notice for this exercise, I am not digging into the skin. Not this. I'm gonna practice this. I'm gonna release. E and up, two, E and up, three, E and up. Right, the up. We're gonna focus on the ups. We all know how to hit the bass drum. Our focus is gonna be really timing that setup. All right, here we go. Three and four, up, one, E and up, two, E and up, up. Up, E and up, E and up, E and up, E and up, and up, 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 sorry, up, 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 up. Up, 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 up. Give that ankle a nice little flick. You can see on the left side of my screen. Derek, you're playing flat foot technique. You gotta be careful there, yeah. This is heel up. You got a molar wind up. Look at my foot on the left side and try to replicate that. And if all fails, just be amused by my socks and, and trainers. Ten seconds more. Okay. All right. Let's unmute yourselves and stop for questions. Questions, issues, anything. There's lots of little exercises that we can do f uh, for troubleshooting, right? So, so far, wh what's been the, the most difficult aspect of heal up? Um, to me, it's been, um, you know, when you, when you put the foot, your foot down and you, and you like, yeah, yeah, you put your heel down. Yep. That's the hardest one for me. Let me just take a look at your foot. So do that again. Yes, I can. I, so he, here's how you fix that one. So this is for everyone, right? Bring your foot down a little bit more, down the pedal. Slide it down the pe That's it, try again. That's it. Now you can allow that pedal board to, to go up a little more, so you get a bit more recoil from the beater. One second, one second, Derek. Sorry. Okay, that's it. As you, that's it. Bring the f careful, because of course, as we play, and again, this is a troubleshooting that applies to everyone. As we play, um, the 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 foot is bound to slide up isn't it so we got to make sure that we constantly correct just enough so it doesn't really go all the way up the pedal we'll talk about where to place the foot on the pedal and what the differences are 
in a minute. Uh, how about you, uh, Derek? Any issues, questions? Yeah, I'm getting a lot of shadows as I lift up and then yeah. drop. I'm, yeah. I'm getting the double. I'm getting the flutter of the beat. Let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Do that so again. You wound up. St start with the beater. Start with the beater on. Right. Just, to, for, just, just for the first one, gives you a bit extra support. So you lift up. Yep. And then you stop. Oh. Right. It's because you're letting go at the front of the pedal board, right? right? Did you see all that wobbliness? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you got it's it's the ball of your foot needs to be a little lower as you drop the heel. Right. Uh, no, not on the pedal necessarily. Literally a little lower, so the pedal board doesn't have space. Let me show you my foot. So uh, look on the left side here. What you would, we did was this. Okay. Yeah. Right? And you can see that that pedal board is bouncing under my foot. Yeah. Now with enough energy, that's gonna affect that one. But that's gonna give you that flutter f sound, right? What you need to do is as you drop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do this very slowly, so it's, an, it's not going to be natural, but as you drop, that the front of your foot never lifts. This. Now, you don't need to obsess over the beater not moving. The pedal board not moving is, is the tail. If you get a, a bouncy pedal board, see that? Yeah. That's a no-go. If you get this, now you're in control. See the difference? Yeah. Just watch the pedal board's reaction to the stroke. Wind up. Yeah. You've got. You've got. Everything was correct up until the the drop. The drop. You. You. That's why I pointed that out at the beginning, right? Let's be careful so we don't lift the toes, right? Yeah. So try that again. So lift up. That's it. Yeah, that's better. That's it. Controlling that pedal board precisely. One more, one more. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's okay. Try again. It then. That one, the image froze for a second. Do that again. So. Still I can lower the toes just a little. Yeah, just a I tad more. I saw, the, I saw the gap there lifting yeah. up. It's so. all good. Well. Again, again. again. Yeah. Still a little, yeah, right. Yeah. So that's what needs what we, you can concentrate on that during the, the whole session, right? You're going to really keep an eye out for that um, for that space between the ball of your foot and the pedal board. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Dave? Any questions? No, I think it's fine. The, the, the only slight thing I think it's just with the with the pedal is the beta is going past the vertical. It's just where the pad is on this, but you can't quite see it on the top here. But the oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's though. now on the pad, but as you can see the angle on it, it's actually past the vertical. So I'm getting yeah, I can see the beta. Yeah, I'm getting double <laughs> beat on it, but that's simply because it's there. Is actually not touching mm -hmm. the thing. It's there. It's actually touching. I think you can bring it back a little bit. Yeah, well, I may, I may have to adjust it. I'll get the uh, get the pad forward a little bit, but yeah, <laughs> at the moment, so I'm getting sort of doubles because it's. It's bouncing off the rubber as well, and it's not, the vertical is slightly there. But that, I, I know that's simply not an issue with the technique. It's more just, just the angle yes. of the, the beater on the. Uh, yeah, I can see the beater is going too far forward. It's going because that's so that's that's on the pad at the moment. That there is not touching mm. anything. That's in mid air, mm. so there's a lot of wobble there. That yeah. is actually on the pad. We never did modify that, did we? We never got round to right. So no, we were looking at some of the screws, weren't we, to try and drag it forward? Yeah. It's, but that's, I mean, that's, it's not the technique that's an issue. I think I've got that. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Looks good. And keeping it on there. All right. Alex, any questions? Uh, no, I didn't find it. Okay, really happy. Uh, good. Let's take a quick look, see. Uh, you need to turn on your original sound because it looks good, but it sounds like nothing. Oh, sorry. Remember to, however, however, you, we, for this case specifically, we want to release after the strokes. Oh, okay. and that's where the control is going to come from. Oh, okay. That's it, let go. Okay. 
Caref careful with how you're setting it up. You're rushing uh, into the stroke. So you're actually getting a stroke on the way up for the wind down, uh, for the wind up, sorry. So you're, you're getting an accidental stroke as you're getting ready to play. So it starts with the beater on the skin, just for the very, very first one, because we're still not really generating any momentum, so we need that extra support there. By the way, you don't have to. You can start here. It's just more difficult on your balance, right? You might need to support yourself with your hands at first. So to keep the beater on the skin for the very first one helps, but then as soon as you're, let me just, uh, sorry, let me just move this floor to my So then, as you, as you strike, you start with the beater on, but then, release. Okay. Okay, give that a go. Good. Careful not to create that accidental one as you're setting the next one up. Yeah. Because all of that, right, right there, all of that's gonna need practice as well. So as as you can, as you guys can tell, right, I started today's workshop by saying um, the bass drum and the bass drum pedal are severely overlooked devices on on the drum kit. We all know that we're not supposed to do this as we prepare a stroke with our hands. Uh, yeah, I said this, and you, of course you couldn't see anything of what I did. But. So we all know we're not supposed to hit the skin and then hit again just because we're setting it up. But, um, but with the bass room, we do a lot of these little things by accident because we're just not paying enough atten attention. It's a bit of a out of sight, out of mind problem, right? The bass room is all the way down there on the floor. Um, the hands are really close to the eyes and, th and that, that plays a big role as to why it's so much more difficult to, to coordinate and, and even collaborate with the bass drum pedal. There's more reasons behind that. The bass drum pedal uh, uses a spring to create recoil. The sticks don't, we just pick them up or we generate rebound because usually we would strike at pretty much close to a vertical, uh, sorry, a horizontal surface, which generates rebound on the way back. But the, um, the bass drum uh, is of course a vertical skin so it's, it's quite difficult for it to generate a, a rebound. So the spring supports that, obviously, right? It's there for that. Um, obviously, the bass drum skin is much looser than the snare drums, less rebound. So there's a, a lot play, playing against us, in a way, when it comes to rebound. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, heel down. Now, we're gonna rest our heels right there on the heel plate. Okay, we're gonna align the heel with that heel plate. And we're gonna leave, once again, we're gonna try to make sure that the pedal board and the bottom of your foot stay always connected. So we don't wanna play heel down like this. I don't know if you guys can hear, there's a little uh, the, when my foot taps the pedal board, creates a bit of a flam. A flam between that noise and then the bass drum actually being hit. Let's see if I can edit so you guys can. And the reason why I want to show you this is because that's a tell for you. If, if that starts to happen to you guys, you got to pick up on the fact that that sound is being created and therefore you'll know why. It's because the foot is disconnecting from the pedal board. So listen up. That's the foot letting go. Then it taps. And then it presses. And then it taps. So to, to avoid that, you have to make sure that the, the foot and the pedal board never unlatch. Like I said earlier, don't worry about playing super loud. 
mode. Just worry about controlling the pedal. Okay, so let's mute everyone and let's practice some heel down techniques and then we'll discuss what problems arise from it. So one, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. Always reset the foot. If it starts sliding up, reset the foot, uh, the foot back to the heel plate. Three, four. One, two. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No heel motions, Ben. It's the heel is always touching the heel plate, and then it's all ankle. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. Keep your back nice and straight. Three, four. One, two, 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 three, four, and one. Okay, so far, questions. You can unmute yourselves. Any issues? Yeah, just, I, don't, I don't find that comfortable at all. <laughs> well, I want to say that heel up technique is one of the most important ones. It's a mm -hmm. great found yeah. foundational technique. It's really going to show who's got some ankle power and who's just leveraging all sorts of hip strokes to play the bass drum. The problem with hip strokes is that, of course, they generate lots of volume, but they are terrible for speed, right? Your hip is not designed to just move really fast. We know this even if we think about the hands, right? What would be the joints that you would rely on if you want to play a fast single stroke roll? Your shoulders? I don't think so, right? You, you wouldn't just rock your shoulders like you try to play. Right? You, we laugh, but that's what we try to do with the hips, right? The hip is the shoulder of the leg. The knee is the elbow of the leg, and the ankle is the wrist of the leg. Right? These parallels exist between uh, leg technique or foot technique and, and the hand technique, right? And we need to think about that stuff the same way. It's really helpful if we do that, because if you wouldn't use um, you know, your shoulders to play singles, then why the hips? If I would rely mostly on, um, you know, wrist wrist strokes or motions for singles mm -hmm. um possibly then the ankles are supposed to be doing that job with my feet now does that mean that we never use the shoulders when we're playing the drums no that doesn't mean that at all the shoulders engage when we play for example really big fat molar strokes back beats right then the molar in, uh, the sorry the shoulder engages same thing for the hips when we want to go for those big fat one drop bass drum notes boom yeah sure we do that wind up from the ankle but then the hip reacts just like the hands wrist goes up elbow bends shoulder reacts <laughs> same thing with the leg right foot goes up knee uh, doesn't bend but it, obviously there's a, a change of angles there between the upper leg and the lower leg so that's the knee uh, and then the hip reacts at the end so it's ankle, knee, hip. Mm -hmm. But it does start at the ankle. That's the important message here, right? Okay. So the next exercise I want to do is going to combine the last two things we talked about. Heel ups and heel downs. Okay. What we'll do now is we'll play eight strokes heel down, eight strokes heel up. Like this. One and two and three. Four up, one and two and three and four down, one and two and three and four up, and two, three and four down, one and two and three and four up, one and two and three and four down. Now, a couple of uh, points here that I want to bring up. 
Um, the very last note, so I'm counting in eighth notes. So the end of four for both bars are, is a transition motion. So if I'm coming from heel down, one and two and three and four and bring that heel up on the end and then heel up one and two and three and four and release and drop. So those ands of fours are transition motions where we have to set up the next lot. Okay, makes sense. This one, it gets, it starts to get a little bit more challenging. So I'll give you guys two minutes to just try it out by yourselves and then we'll do it together. I'll be right back. You guys can give that a practice. Okay, so before we, we all do this together here, um, from what you've guys done so far, do we have any questions? No, nope, not for me. No, 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 no. Derek, Alex, you good? No, I'm good, thanks, Joe. All right, so let's do it, do it with a click. Uh, uh, before we get into this, I got to point something out here. Your beater, Alex, it's, yeah, there's an issue there that you need to fix. Your spring tension is very, very loose to the point that it's just almost collapsing backwards. You need to fix your spring tension there. I mean, not, not now, but there's, there's an issue that's going to be quite difficult for you to control that. But yeah. That, that's fixable, just, yeah, you got to tighten that spring a little more. All right, anyway, I was just noticing that, that bit, see that? How it's stopping and then it drops backwards, that's the spring, yeah. Yeah. Okie dokie, let's give this a go, back to this guy, there we go. Okay, so eight strokes each technique. Two, three, and four, go. One E and the two E and up. One E and the two E and drop. One E and the two E and up. One E and the two E and drop. One E and the two E and up. One E and the two E and drop. Up. 
Let's use more of the ankle. We don't want to be poking at the pedal. Drop. One, E, and the two, E, and up. Molar motions here. Up. Up. Drop. Up. Okay, so I think we have a little bit to discuss here before we move on. Uh, so Derek, if you don't mind unmuting yourself. Okay, so what were the, the main issues uh, you believe? What do you think? Derek? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I think I was still lifting my, from what I could say, I was still lifting my toes off a bit at the front. Okay. And how about, the, what about the heel up, up technique, heel up technique? It's okay, but I'm, I still feel like I'm putting, I'm putting pressure not on the ball of the toes. I'm still, um, stabbing at the pedal from from what, yeah, what i wanted to have seen more is more of that relaxed molar motion coming from the that whipping effect uh so i'll so i wanted to have seen more of this right which that that preparatory exercise that we did that that was to help with that principle there of the whip so i wanted to have seen more of this and less this, yeah, where the heel stays up all the time. I want to see more of that ankle engagement. Yeah, I love to work on that. My my ankle, my ankle don't like that. It will. This that, that's why, by the way, for all of you guys, this it's not easy. Which is why this exercise is a really good one. It's going to start to really teach you what that the nature of that motion is, right? Keeping that ball of the foot down whilst the ankle hops up and down. That's exactly what it is because I can feel when I do that, I, I can feel I'm instantly releasing at the front. So it, do, do this one again then with, without playing, just uh, tapping with your heel. You yeah. Seem yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's, it's going to happen. Yeah, you're going to get every now and then the beat is going to come off. That's it. That's it. And then from there, you just release enough so the beater actually re actually responds and actually st strikes the skin. No, 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 no. So, so it's not after the, the 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 heel drop that you release. It's as you go up. As you go up, you release just enough so the beater comes off. Oh, so I should go up, right? Look, 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 look. Sorry. Uh, that heel goes up but we release a little bit of that pressure at the front not all we don't want this but the beater come and then we get the stroke up do that again so it's on there so oh yeah drop that's it that's okay. it Okay, and everything is going to feel very broken into two like small pieces and nothing feels very natural. Don't worry about that stuff. That, that's for all of you, right? Uh, so, Ben, before I, we move on, because I want to talk a little bit about doubles today, but I'm aware that we, we, don't, we only have 10 minutes left. Um, show me the, um, the, the exercise, if you don't mind. So, eight strokes heel down, eight strokes heel up.
Yeah, that's okay. Cool. Sound, let's move on. Now, back to this. Okay, you guys can see the where to place the foot. You can all unmute yourselves, by the way. We'll be a bit of a talking. In fact, we might just chat for a bit about technique till the end. Um, okay, so you can all see the where to place the foot um, slide, right? At the top of the pedal, you'll have more control. So if you're, the ball of your foot or even your toes are uh, closer to the skin, you'll have more control at a slower tempo. Okay, so at for slow strokes, slow grooves, not a lot of busyness coming from the bass drum, that's a perfectly fine place to position the ball of your foot farther up the pedal. Because again, more control. The pedal is gonna be less um, bound to, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? The pedal board will, will be less reactive to the spring tension because you have more foot on it, right? Just more mass on it. It's just logic, isn't it? However, as speed goes up, you will want to bring that foot down a touch so you can actually catch more leverage because you will actually allow more pedal board to be exposed. You're gonna get more recoil. So at faster tempos, you'll start to leverage momentum, right? So you basically, your foot's gonna be further down the pedal. And in that way, as that beater um, comes back and so does the pedal board, you, s you just tap it again. Once again, there's a parallel here to be made between foot technique and uh, hand technique. Let me show you. That. We know, so let me switch to, we know that, you know, where we hold the sticks, it's going to change the reaction of the stick. We all know that, right? So if I hold it too far up, it doesn't really bounce much. If I hold it too far back, it doesn't really bounce much. And then there's that sweet spot. Pedals are no different. They've got sweet spots of technique and rebound uh, response, right? So when we then come down to move a foot down the pedal, it's going to be a bouncier response, right? Which is why for slower tempos, not very good because you're going to get a lot of this. Look at the beater moving. And, and there's no need for all of that if I'm actually only playing a note every other quarter note or something like that. But if I'm trying to play fast, then I'm actually going to leverage that rebound. It starts to become a bit of a dribbling a basketball sort of effect, right? Tap, 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 tap. And you end up uh, catching that rebound. And if you work out that sweet spot um, between you tapping and the beater coming back, then you get, you get a nice relationship of momentum there. Okay, so... It's important to explore those different placements to see what feels better, what gives you more of what, and just try things out. Even if it comes out all sloppy and wonky, that's fine, right? Your foot needs to get used to feeling the pedal. Now, this is one of the, ma the main problems when it comes to uh, bass drum technique, once again, out of sight, out of mind. So we don't really know how to feel the pedal. We gotta spend quality time with it. That's how, right? We gotta spend time with it. So, the next idea here is the difference between heel down and heel up. We already talked about this. Heel down is more of a Gladstone approach to technique. So if you recall that from hand technique workshops, Gladstone is when you don't have the wind up. You don't have that setup coming from the, the, the back of the wrist. There's no this. Gladstone is the forearm is flat and then the wrist works up and down. That's Gladstone. Up, 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 whilst a molar up would be this. Right? And that's, that's the main difference as well here between uh, heel up and heel down. So in heel up, you, you have that um, 
setup, that Muller setup. Heel down, it's more of a Gladstone. The heel stays put, the lower leg stays put. Tap, 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 tap. Right? The ankle is the wrist of the leg. So those are just wrist motions, no uh, whipping involved. Okay. So let's just uh, let's just um, summarize all of this. Let me just because we won't have time for the doubles today, but that's fine. We'll do that next week. So flat foot very helpful for heel up control because it's going to engage the hip. That's what I mentioned earlier, right? It's going to teach you to work with the hip. So we avoid that, um, you know, poke, poke, poke technique. Troubleshooting for flat foot technique. If you're struggling with balance, do not lean back, right? I said that earlier, right? Use the, the snare drum if needed for support. Don't lean backwards. That's going to uh, literally move you away from the pedal. So it's going to take weight off the pedals and you're going to struggle even more with balance. It becomes a bit of a feedback loop. Yeah. Heel up requires a different angle between upper leg and lower leg. This is important. The way we are uh, sat affects the, the technique, right? If the uh, lower leg is tucked in, for example, you're going to struggle with heel down. But if the upper leg is, uh, or if your knee, let's say your kneecap, feels higher than your hip, you're gonna struggle with heel up. So we need to know how to sit, how to position the legs, how to position the, your bottoms on, on the seats as well. If we're sitting on, uh, all the way back, or if, we're, if we are sitting close to the edge, all of that affects your technique. Now, to, this is a setup for next week, I guess, but to play doubles, you, you will require ankle control. Heel up floating technique is very floating for this. Now, I didn't mention this today, heel up floating technique. I will come back to this next week, so not to worry. A and then finally, as we said already, setups are key. With no setups, you will end up mistiming and misfiring the actual strokes. So it all starts from setting up the the motions correctly and timely enough so with that it's one o'clock so i want to uh, open the floor for questions anything that you guys want to clarify before we wrap it up but, uh, huh? to stop myself lifting my toes off and not stabbing at the pedal you just really, I guess, just would you suggest playing barefooted or take uh, or... No, no, I, I'm not really. Uh, in that regard, I'm one of those guys who believes that you should be able to play with any footwear. Uh, I, I play the bass drum with walking boots or all stars. It doesn't really. I mean, sure, I mean, if the, the boots are really heavy, yeah, I feel like I'm doing a workout, but it's not like I can't move my feet anyway. Yeah. So I, I, I'm a bit like that. Some people, you know, they will swear by playing barefoot. Some people will swear by, I only play with Converse. I mean, right, you're going to find um, dogma everywhere. What I would say is that for you to avoid, um, I think it's more about understanding the techniques, really, than the footwear, right? So, for instance, if you spend enough time uh, doing what Dave is doing now, for example, your ankle will start to loosen up. If you spend yeah. enough time uh, practicing your heel down technique, your ankle will start to loosen up. And of course, it's being uh, uh, paying attention to the aftermath 